<laughs> Y'all living in your own private Idaho. <laughs> living in your private Idaho. <laughs> no? I don't know. I don't know. You guys know what that is? Is that a song? It's B-52s. Oh. Um, I know Love Shack. That's like my least favorite song from them. Bang, bang, because bang. it's popular. I hate oh, it because they do it in karaoke so fucking much. And you <clears> want to <throat> punch those There's singers. so many better songs. I hate it because I don't know what they're saying at the very end of the song. What? Which is like, <laughs> Tin Roof, Tin rusted. roof rusted. rusted. Yeah, it doesn't make fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost, at the Love Shack. Almost all of their songs don't really make sense. Except for like the political ones. Now, which one of them is dead? The guy? The girl? Is one Kate Pearson dead? still alive? Uh, oh, it was the uh, guitarist. It was, um, it was, uh, what's her name's brother? Um, the B-52s? Where's Billy Eilish at? You guys suck. Why the fuck does <laughs> YouTube <laughs> keep sending me fucking garbage ads Because one Billie day Eilish. he ceased to breathe. <laughs> he died. Fuck lobster. I was saying something, and then he has just... Jumped in. Um, you're so angry about your Billy Eilish because you're not getting him. She looks like the meme frog. Yes. I don't know who she is. Oh, I don't know why she's so popular. I know. She doesn't do anything doesn't different do. than any other artist out there. She whispers, sings. His daughter's like a huge fan of hers. I'm like, I bet she sings good if she would Open sing. her fucking mouth? Yeah. Can you sing? Open your mouth. You know what I do like, though? Poppy. Mm. Poppy. Look her up. Like poppy seeds. P-O-P-P-Y? Yeah. You know what I'm happy about? What? Is that a singer? <laughs> yeah. Van- <laughs> Vance is hitting eighth gear and we're still on one topic. Vance, go ahead, though. I want to hear what you're so excited about. Shakira is doing the, pre- hey. the <laughs> super Super Bowl halftime show and her hips don't lie. I'll be there and you'll be there. I want to make a video, Onion style, where she's shaking her hips. And they actually f- disembody, like they disembowel her. <laughs> her <laughs> hips fly off. Her hips My f- hips go fly. <laughs> and she's just a torso laying on the stage. <laughs> I don't know who this person is. Are they poppy? Is it is it, is it pop? It's she's an American singer songwriter. All right, so here here's what it is. She's cute. She used to make these videos where she would par- parody fucking like ASMR shit. And ask a bunch of like inane questions and and things like that. It was just kind of like avant garde comedy. Now she makes video like music that's like really, it's so good. <laughs> like, um, but it's very um, it's very satirical. Uh, but it's like metal pop, and it's just kind oh. of weird to. I have to look at this. But there's a song called "I Disagree" by her that I think a lot of people can. I think Brandon might hate it, but Brandon, check, check it out, Brandon. Maybe you might like it. I don't know. I think Natalie might like it though. Mm, but I think she's I'm really she's, meticulous she's, about. She's very funny about female singers. She no, I give you. She, it's satire, Natalie. It's not oh. real. Like it's oh yeah. I give you a lot of shit about hating things and and just generally being negative about everything. But you are in the amateur bracket next to B Wonder. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't swing the big leagues in that in that genre. <laughs> no, he uh, <laughs> he definitely takes the gold home for for the U.S. I don't understand why. It, uh, it's none it. I, mm, I whatever. Okay. Uh, I I say I like a lot of things. I like a lot of things. It's my defense. There you go. That's my evidence. There it is, right there. You like me. Yeah, kind of. Right. You're right. You're okay. <laughs> Stop. What? It got weird. I was singing Private Idaho. I don't know, Nelly, why do you keep singing Private, <laughs> Private Idaho? That's song I know. <laughs> That's the song I Get know. Get out of that pole. <laughs> um, we have potatoes. <laughs> Underground like a wild potato. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I've been helping my buddy move and, um, sometimes when we take a break, um, we'll sit down and watch music videos and stuff. And, um, I wish we could get away with doing a show, a recorded show where we listen to a video, music video, and then present facts about it and talk about the stuff behind it. Mm. But is that like pop up video? 
kind of, but it, it, instead it would be a a video where you're Let's listening to us talk video. about like the singer and stuff like that, and we'd be giving facts, but we'd also make fun of it a little bit here and there. We would be pop up sued for sure. Yeah, we, that's and that's what sucks is like to me. I don't really understand because if people were using our stuff on YouTube. <laughs> I just think it would help us out. Is, isn't like, there something you can use up to 14 seconds of somebody's music video? That was like video. three. I thought it was 14. I don't know. I'm not an expert in that. You should probably consult your lawyer at Hoppin and Brian. <laughs> Ronnie Deutsch. Uh, Morgan and Morgan and Morgan and Morgan and Morgan. <laughs> and Fierce. Ronald J. Pelagi. Uh, yeah, and Ronnie Deutsch and Ronald J. Pelagi. Is he still around? Ronald J. Pelagi? Yeah. I don't know. He gave one of my friends a scooter when <laughs> I don't think that's the same get person. Get in the car. Yeah, exactly. You want to get in my van? I got no, a scooter in um, for you. The, the dude's mom used to clean the office for him. My friend Todd's mom <laughs> used to clean, uh, clean the office for good old Ronnie J. Pelagi. Ronnie and, uh, J. Pelagi. He sold him a Honda Elite scooter for a dollar. A hun- oh, like a, like a... Like a scooter. Like, like a... a- they call him a Fagio and uh, Grand Theft Auto. Like that kind of scooter? Like a, I've meep, never meep. played Grand Theft Auto. Oh, and then you steal cars. <laughs> so this says you can use this song for 10, 15, or 30 seconds legally. That's so fucking arbitrary. It's like... So what if you piece this song, like ran it for 30 seconds and then said something, said something, and then ran it again? Well, they also have like things that you can get around it by putting the song up, but then you like distort it so... yeah. And I'm like, why don't you just, when has that ever been a problem? Why don't you just take the ad revenue you get from it and give it to the person? How's that? What if, what if we play something backwards, but then it says something like, and we crack some fucked up scheme people have to take over the world? Sure. Uh, that, that could happen. It could. In a million years, maybe. But, you know, with a given timeline, you know, you can do a lot. <laughs> But yeah. I don't see why you shouldn't be able to use that stuff because all you're really doing is helping the artist at that point. That's all you're doing. Let's say there's a mood there. Let's say there's something from the 80s, like a song, right? Cameo, word up, right? Okay. And you've got a bunch of people who are 20 years old, you know, that have never heard it after yeah, it being around. keep the fucking song alive. Yeah, keep it alive. Keep why it alive, would you guys. fucking fault someone for wanting to play your stuff? Again, if people were playing our stuff everywhere, I'd be like super happy. Just make the, if, if they're getting paid for it, though, just split the commission. It's like, they're still doing something. I don't know. Uh, the only thing I, the only time that should never work is a reaction video. Because you're doing absolutely fucking nothing. I was going to tell you, there's a reaction channel on There's a reaction Facebook channel everywhere. Facebook, and it's, I don't know, I won't say the name of it. Fucking stupid. Antithesis of fucking art. Millions and millions of views. <clears throat> it's, I it's, thought of you when it's I saw ridiculous. them. It's like, Hey, uh, can I, can I plug a, uh, YouTube channel real quick. No. Well, you got to find the outlet first. My uh, yeah, my nephew us. started a <clears throat> a YouTube channel where he's going to be doing a lot of stuff with uh, import motors. And he'll do like Grom stuff and anything that has to do with cars, motors, even probably like RC stuff. But check him out. It's uh, You can learn a lot from him. He's a pretty smart guy. It's uh, Star. That's S-T-A-R-R built. B U I L T. Is that the same guy who made the Thanksgiving food? No. No, that was my other one. This other guy's cool, though. All right. I like him. Because I was going to say, if that man can cook (laughs) and fix my motorcycle, (laughs) I'm going to marry that man. I'm just going to have him divorce his wife. Hi. (laughs) They're not married. You're good. Uh, Okay, cool. (laughs) You can get in on that. (laughs) Um, uh, Yeah. I. uh, Mac and cheese, though. I'm going to go ahead and do the intro. Yeah. Because last time we didn't do it for almost the whole fucking thing. Look so. at us on our points. <coughs> yeah. our games. We're just terrible. Me, 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 me. Uh, I don't need to do that, but okay. Uh, this is a Don't Look Under Bed pod- <coughs> podcast for all things coming or one of your, um, I'm one of your perfectionist hosts, Dan Wonder. Next to me is Natalie Rose. Next to her is Not So Perfect Vinnie Rose. Oh. Well, you don't have to be perfect. Oh. You just have to be close to it. Uh, then this is Don't Look Under Bed podcast. Thanks, thanks everyone for listening, and we've got a podcast for today. Yeah. And that's it. All right. Yeah. Bye. Good Have show, night, guys. guys. All right. See you later. Bye. <laughs> clip, clop, clip, pop up the stairs. Why, why am I wearing hooves? <laughs> Who says I got my hoof shoes on. Nobody can see your feet here. They don't know that you don't have hooves. Oh, I got a fucking idea. Yeah. I'm going to put it out there because from now on, when I have an idea, I'm going to put it out in public, and it's going to be recorded so that if they make Quiet Place 3, 
I can get even angrier. <laughs> my 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 idea is to take all the recyclable plastics, mm-hmm. right? Now, hear me out. Mm-hmm. All right, you follow me. Um, Ta- you only said one thing, so I think we're good. <laughs> take all the plastics. Check. All right, and 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 just hold them there for real, real quick. And I want to go. I want you to go on a journey with me, real. Is there a step quick. two to this? Or yeah, just no. hold the. Fu- I said hold on. Lunch. All right, so <clears throat> you know how you get your packages delivered through you know an ordering service, Amazon, uh, you know drug dealers, loot boxes, whatever have you, right? And they get delivered to your house, uh-huh. and you can. And if you're not home, they just kind of put them on the doorstep, easily taken by people who just walk by, and it's been recorded. All over the internet, people doing that. I've right? seen yeah. the videos. Here's my proposition, right? You take all the recycled plastics that we were holding, right? And you make a lockbox that you put in front of your house that's heavy enough so and big enough that cannot be stolen easily. And you can make it accessible through a locked bolt. And it's a code that only the person or the seller knows. Like a realtor's code? Kind of like somebody like, okay, so you order a package from Amazon and they have a, hey, what is your code for your box? You input your code, it gets uploaded to their server, and then the person that delivers it has it on their, on their little pad. So that way when they can drop it off, they go beep, 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 open it up, put the package in, close it, locks, good to go. Can we just make new plastic for that? <laughs> I, I hope they do food like that too. What do you mean? Well, because I'd be the guy delivering hot dogs and be like, I'm going to up my wiener in your box. <laughs> I think that's a cool idea, Daniel. You're welcome. Can we make that? Let's make that happen. How do we I would make love that to do that. Uh, I don't. I'm not a businessman. And I don't know anything about it. I, I just had an idea for it because it's like you have a suit. My tie. buddy. My so you buddy. Make fucking, it out of recycled. Sorry. You, take, you make it out of tough recycled plastics. The <clears> stuff that you can't recycle easily, and it's the hardest thing. It's thrown into a fucking like, landfill under the ocean, like laundry detergent bottle plastic. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, but stuff that's already but stuff that's already on the market and you can make that out of it. But you, and it would and you can customize it so that way you can bolt it to your siding of your house or the brick and you can have like little things into it and you can also make little uh and it could be waterproof and it can be um heated and things like that so that way if you have a pa- or cooled if you have a package that's on the summer that and it's you won't be home for a couple hours and you can put it in the thing and it'll actually keep it cool for How about a little while. have it run off solar. And have it run off solar. That was my other you thing. Could also, put a clear plate on it and do like an ATM and have a camera. Sure, but yeah, I was that's that was my that was my idea. So if it ever gets fucking made, and it was not by me, right here, that's where you heard. Oh, they'll make it out of steel. Trust me, they're not going to do it out of recycled plastic because that would last longer. It would last way longer, oh, and sure it wouldn't it would. rust. Sure, we just give our packages, have our butler pick them up. <laughs> Wait, we and don't have what? a butler. Who am I giving those to? Here's, here's the thing. Even uh, if you couldn't feasibly get enough plastic to make it so heavy that they couldn't take off with it, just I, I know you don't want to use a lot of metal, but if you're going the extra mile to have this thing installed, you could lag it to the house or lag it to the car. That's what I was talking about. With, that's, that's what I was talking with about. With, like, lag bolts. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. You can bolt it to your house or the steps or wherever it's going to be, and it can be easily accessible on the side of the house as well. So that way you can keep it on the side in just in case your porch isn't big enough and things like that. If you do that, though, they should make it like like U.S. mail. Like, it should be a federal tax fuck with somebody's box. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and the hopes would be that the lockbox would be waterproof and stable enough to last you years so it can come with the house and it, it, it could maybe increase the value of it a little bit. I don't know. But... I'm not a professional businessman. I, I don't know what I'm talking box about. And get my crap out of or your crap out of the box. And I also had a I also had a point about food too because they already do it in Las Vegas. They should take the old food that comes Eva. from buffets and feed it to farms. Uh, no, give we, it to the pigs. We put ours in the trash because yeah, um, and that really fucking disappoints me. <laughs> um, I usually just throw it at the wall and then walk away. <laughs> Somebody else clean it. Yeah. Oh wait, this is my house. Oh, so you have the you have the uh, the authority and entitlement of yeah, a regular I got that um, asshole of America. It's American. like a, a little dinosaur guy that I open the curtains under the sink and he comes out like in the Flintstones <laughs> and eats my garbage. I was with somebody. I won't name him on on here, but uh, we were at the casino eating, and <clears throat> they're noticing in the buffet there's a lot of food waste. Yeah, and they're not even super like eco-friendly people Mm -hmm. but he's like they need to make uh just some kind of a trough 
that puts this shit in the river. The food, just the food. Just like the for the fish and stuff to eat. Fish will eat anything. I'm, I don't just food. I don't know about that. Because I I I feel like it'd be better if we gave it to because to me that's polluting. It's not polluting if it's completely biodegradable and edible. I don't know. I just don't see too many <clears throat> fish wanting to, you know. Oh, man. Catfish eat anything. Well, I don't know anything about fish either, so you're talking to the wrong no, guy. I'm not, but... I'm not saying, like, what what isn't eaten as far as, like, okay, this big trough of spaghetti wasn't eaten. Let's throw it in there. <laughs> Mamma no, mia. what they're talking about is when somebody doesn't eat everything on their plate that oh. you can't give to, like, uh, a homeless shelter or... Well, that was, that was the other thing that I think they should fucking do, too. But there's, like, people are like, well, there's laws against it. I'm like, then have the homeless shelter sign a waiver. Yeah. There's, if you're a homeless person and you're getting oh, I'll free sign anything. food, there's yeah. you'll fucking in, sign uh, it. In certain states that give their leftover lunches to homeless shelters, they, like they have they, a pact. They should do it without disposable containers, number one. But number two, it should be a thing that people do. Another but, thing schools are doing, I, I want to say it was in, is in Baltimore or... Or Philadelphia, What's somewhere. Going on? But they were uh, <laughs> okay when the food wasn't eaten yeah. for uh, for the day at school, like uh-huh. at the lunch. Yeah, they had volunteer kids come in and help them package this stuff up. Uh-huh. And they have like this the vacuum seal <laughs> film thing that goes over, and and they make little frozen dinner things for the kids that are like poverty stricken, and they can take them home. Uh, they each get like four to take home so they get two of them a day on saturday and sunday yeah and that's and that's totally cool i i would go a step further and go is there a way we can make this eco more eco-friendly and make reusable containers that you use like have with, them bring in their little have them bring in the container yeah. because here's the thing the fucking schools sometimes the kids they don't even eat that shit anyway now if it were me and i was at the school I'd be like, you gotta eat your beef cutlet. <laughs> like, can I get some of that cream turkey? Can I get some of that cream turkey? It's pizza day, bitch. <laughs> I didn't like the pizza. Oh, man. Do the school. Where or, our, the, or the burritos. I don't like that either. What was it called? The fi- It was, wasn't pizza. It was fist. Fiesta Tostada. To, ugh. Mexican okay. pizza mm-hmm. is essentially what it was. Mm-hmm. Brandon liked it a lot, too. I didn't. Me, too. I don't think Natalie liked it either, did no. you? And the square my, pizza? No. In my junior high school. No, the octagon pizza. No. Dude, well, in my junior high school, we got like milkshakes and salads and shit. We well, you went to Westside, didn't you? No, I went to a school over in Iowa mostly. Okay, because Westside is <clears throat> super like, yeah, you really want godfathers? Your parents pay enough. Like, they don't. <laughs> like, that's like the most, like, that's like one of the most expensive public schools here, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Which it shows. I mean, they have a. Beautiful fucking auditorium. Although I can't fit in their seats, but that says more about my fat ass than it does about them seats. Uh, can you make this bigger, dude? I couldn't fit into them. Like I was like, I, well, we couldn't fit into that fucking Texas Roadhouse booth either. No, that pissed me we off. We can't figure that why their booths are so. I'm like, look I'm who like, your clientele yeah, is. It's like if you can't get two grown men in a booth, y'all got a problem. She was like, I'll get in her table. I'm like, well, thanks. Now I feel like Third girl. <laughs> Vance is like, welcome to the club, bitch. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like, I don't understand that, here, though. Let me go ahead and uh, extend this table out nine feet for you folks. Oh, yeah. I'll be right back with your napkins. I just have to run to Canfield's tent and awning store. <laughs> they closed. Thank you. <laughs> Baby, who he wants stanky. <laughs> I pooped. <laughs> they, they, they do like the... Uh, they do like so they do like the line dance and the, and the sing along, you know. Yeah. For like ten minutes, right? And then like ten minutes later, they do the poopy clean up dance. <laughs> I'll tell you this, D Love listeners: if you ever do go out to a dinner with Dan, uh, make sure you cut your fucking roll in half before you butter it, because dude, just putting he, butter on the top or the bottom of the roll and eating it, yeah, roll of the that simply kids. will not. All do. right, hold on hold here. On. Back the truth trolley up here. Ding ding. What we're ta- ding, what ding, we're ding. talking about here, Zatarans, is that we <laughs> we <laughs> we were sitting there eating. Uh, and this is before I became, I went back to veganism, but we were eating the Texas Roadhouse with the butter rolls. All right. And first off, they're, they're fucking, so good. Their fucking rolls are amazing. <laughs> In the mean. I learned how to make their butter, that cinnamon butter. It's just cinnamon and sugar and butter. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then I, you whip it. Like I make it perfect. Whip it good. Uh, but then, so I was eating one and Vance was sitting across from me. We we're talking. He pulls one out. 
flips it over so that the the bun <laughs> bottom is facing his well, face it's the now. the flat side holds the butter. No, no, no. I need to get through this. And he takes the butter and he wipes it on the bottom. And I was like, oh, then he must cut the bottom other part off and then just do a weird sandwich thing. Nope. Fucking no. He just takes the butter, puts it on the bottom and eats it. <laughs> what kind of fucking blasphemy of food is that? Why would you do that? I like bread. No, that's fine. I like bread too, <laughs> but butter. I, I do bread correct. <laughs> does it like, taste differently? I, I think it does. Uh, well, I don't. <laughs> I think it does. Uh, it's, the same, it's the same thing when somebody goes, who cares if your sandwich is smashed? All the ingredients are the same. Fuck you. That, that ruins my sandwich. Bro, I'll fucking smash a sandwich into a dough ball and eat that one. <laughs> and then it just right. expands. He eats it like an apple. <laughs> <laughs> a ham apple. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, mayonnaise pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Natalie. <coughs> what do we got today? Um, we're doing Idaho part tizzoo. <laughs> I've never heard that song. It's fun. I don't believe it's, it's a real. fun song. Fun. and You wouldn't even it? know. Fun like a stomach pump. On the ground like a wild potato. Beware the poo. <laughs> Mr. Potato here. Yeah. Oh my god. So on Orville. You guys haven't watched it. No. no I'm watching um Good Girls and You. That's two different shows. Good Girls and then the other show's called You. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Hey, oh, that was it. Oh, I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything oh, okay. with Orville, so but it's really fucking good, so watch it. You was really good too, so watch that shit. If you, because you guys like the true crime and stuff. Thanks, you're not that bad yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you're uh, really good, girl. You is good. Um. All right. So we're gonna do two murders today. Well, two, all right. Both murders. We'll um. Drink. One's vintage. One is just um older. I only do vintage murders. I'll so. drink to that. I love vintage murders. Y'all know that. I don't even like new murders because they're not even that great. They're like not old. Yeah. Question mark. They're not even fashionable murder. I got yeah. something I gotta send you guys afterward. After we're done off the, on the. Okay. On the. Uh, May I ride in? On the podcast? On the, yes. I, 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 <laughs> Where am I? Dude. I know. We all worked like long hours and shit. This week has been tired. long. This is my long. fucking Monday. Just another manic Monday. Oh, wish it were a Sunday. That's, That's my, my fun, fun day. Because you don't have don't to have run day. I don't have to run day. I don't have the runs day. <laughs> God, she's gorgeous. Susanna. What's her name? I don't fucking know. The Bangles. All right, vintage murder in 1979. Good year. A headless torso wrapped in a burlap sack wearing mm. a maroon shirt and a pink sweater was found in a grave 18 inches deep in a chilly cave. <laughs> then 12 years later, a girl was exploring the caves and found more of the remains. A partially burned, uh, buried mummy hand. And um, after the volunteers excavated the caves, they found two arms and two legs wrapped in burlap as well. They also found a skeleton of an ostrich, likely unrelated because there was an ostrich farm down the road. Um, the body became known as um, the Buffalo Cave Torso. Why are you laughing? I'm just... Tina, eat your food. <laughs> Get some of this ham. Watch out for the ginger. Um, even with the technology and the science, they were not able to identify the body with no head. Authorities turned to DNA, the Doe Project, and experts from um, Orthrum, a tech company that sequences DNA. Genealogists then built a ge- genealogical tree. Good job. Thank you, Good man. That was job. a mouthful. Um, which led to a huge breakthrough. It blows my mind. Lee Bingham Redgrave, a forensic genealogist with DNA Doe Project, uh, told the New York Times, the really cool thing is, though, that it is um, that his wanted poster <clears throat> from the last escape described as wearing the same clothing that he was found in. So at least it's believed that the death date li- <clears throat> dated to 1916. Mm-hmm. They were able to piece together more details of the life. Um, the son of an early Mormon pioneer, Loveless was a, his name was Loveless, is uh, the, the, the tor- torso's name. The only man that could ever reach me was the son of a, what was he? Loveless? Never mind. <laughs> what are you talking about? That joke fell apart quick. That was like wet cake in the hand, dude. <laughs> it was, but I I forgot what I was where I was going, but it was going somewhere funny. I don't I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm very confused. <clears throat> she said, "Son of something." 
Son of Mormon pioneers? Yeah. <laughs> it's a son, of, a son a Mor- of a Mormon pioneer. <laughs> That's a lot of syllables to throw in that song. Oh, I fit them together perfect. No, you okay. Didn't. Only man that could ever reach me was the son of a Mormon pioneer. <laughs> Vance believes in square circles, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was really confused. I'm like, love McDonald's. <laughs> Wouldn't be son of a Mormon man? We got to get someone on this podcast as dumb as I am. <laughs> <laughs> And the search is on. Somebody that smells what I'm stepping in. All right. So his name was Loveless, and he was arrested in 1914 for bootlegging, but repeatedly escaped jail by sawing through the bars, according to a record <laughs> study by the DNA Doe Project. He was jailed for murdering his ex-wife with an or murdering his wife with an axe. The researchers say after her the same funeral, when he got out of jail with yeah <laughs> at her funeral, his children marked that they were. That their father likely wouldn't remain in jail for long, given his pennant for breaking loose. Sure enough, he escaped again, but was killed shortly after on May 18, 1916. His remains were preserved for as long as 63 years, while surpassing the estimated post-mortem interval of six months to five years. The organization said on Facebook page that um, they also released photos of Loveless and created photographs from his immediate family members and the physical description of his wanted poster. Um, still in keeping with the Loveless Long Mysterious Hunt, it is unknown who killed him and who left his dismembered manes in the cave. Now, now Loveless, I'm going to put you in this cell with this axe. You got to promise not to break these paper mache bars again. I won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's got a little halo he yeah. straightens Ding. out. <laughs> he smiles and his little teeth glitter. Ding. Loveless, you killed her. I was just hacking on her. <laughs> Remember that from yeah, Young I Guns? I remember. What'd you kill him for, Billy? He was hacking. He was hacking on me. No. All right. Um, okay, so this is the more current crime. Um, way more fucked up than what we just read. Oh. But, um, Joseph E. Duncan the Third. Have you guys heard him? I like his donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I don't think this is the what? same guy. D- Joseph, uh, keep going. <laughs> okay, born February 25th, 1963 in Tacoma, Washington. When he was 15 years old, um, in an incident, he, he raped a nine-year-old boy at gunpoint. Well, that's not fun anymore. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this was a fun story until you did you that. You just sucked the fun right out of the room. Can we change rape to gave Legos to? <laughs> he gave a Star Wars Millennium Falcon Lego set to. <laughs> at gunpoint. <laughs> at gunpoint. Build this for me. I I'll can't what, follow man, the pictures. If you've ever stepped on a Lego barefoot, you will want to murder a child. Yep. Yeah. Yes. I'm it hurts. Done. I think it was worse so, than that, stepping on the fucking end of an extension cord. But you know what's yeah, worse that than that? Too. One time, my dog was eating a fucking piece of T-bone and left the bone out oh, on yeah. the kitchen floor, and I stepped on it, and there was blood and probably a little urine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you piss from your foot? <laughs> no, from my. He's my... he's very secretive about that. I don't want to go much further into it. <laughs> It's a government experiment. Pee feeds. It keeps the sweat out of his part, shoes. Uh, <laughs> part toe, part weenie. I call it Tony. <laughs> Speaking of your dog, it sounds like they're. I know. What are they building? Doing? Building buildings up there. Are, we, are they remodeling our kitchen? <laughs> I've been waiting for that. So. <laughs> The newest kitten's got the hammer. Like, <laughs> oh, she's so cute. She's this a cute little fucking she is. buttercup. All right. So the following year, he was arrested for and driving for driving a stolen car. He was sentenced as a juvenile and then sent to Dilson's Boys Ranch in Tacoma. That just sounds terrible. He's going to the Dilson's Ranch. Yeah. <laughs> um, where, according to a report by the Associated Press, he told therapists who was assigned to his case that he had bound and sexually assaulted six boys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he also what if you were like mm. <laughs> I like what I'm hearing mm. <laughs> shut her microphone off Dan. Nom, 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 let's nom, go nom, and nom. finish this up uh, let's see uh, he gave them ice cream the end <laughs> <laughs> um, he also told the therapist that he estimated that he raped 13 younger boys by the time he was 16 why <laughs> And, but, but why, though? <laughs> um, while on parole, Duncan is known to have lived in several places in the Seattle area. 
He was arrested again in 1996, this time for marijuana use. 13, I call it a raper's dozen. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Wow. I don't like that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Am I going to edit that? No, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not, but it, it'll, I mean, it'll do. I, I don't. And then released on parole several weeks later with new restrictions. Um, Authorities believe that during his parole, Duncan murdered Samuel White and Carmen Cubias in Seattle of 1996. Are these women? I don't think he changed his mo. So no, I don't think because then he because then he raped Anthony Martinez. Oh, he's back to it. Yeah. Okay, my, there he is. my grandpa's or, name was Carmen. Yeah, and then he killed Anthony Martinez, not raped him in the Riverside uh, County, California, in 1997. However, both these cases went cold and were not tied to Duncan until after his arrest. Um, in the other case that we have coming up, Duncan was arrested in Kansas and returned to prison in 1997 after violating terms of his parole. He was released on July 14, 2000, with time off for good behavior and moved to Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fargo. Put his friend in a wood chipper. Um, in March 2005, Duncan was charged with um, the July 3rd, 2004 molestation of two boys at a playground in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. On April 5th, 2005, he appeared before the Becker County judge who set bail at U.S. $15,000. A Fargo businessman with whom Duncan had become acquainted with helped him post bail. However, Duncan skipped bail and, and disappeared. No. Yeah. On June 1st, 2005, a federal warrant was issued for Duncan's arrest on the charge of unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. On to Idaho. May 16, 2005, the bodies of Brenda Grohn, which I, I apologize if I'm not saying her last name right, she deserves better, um, and her boyfriend, 37-year-old Mark McKenzie, and her son, uh, 13-year-old Slade Grohn. What a cool name, Slade. Uh, they were found in their home along the Lake Cordelin. I'm What has about that? We, I did have this problem last week, too. C-O-E-U-R. Separate word, D apostrophe A L E N E. Cordeline? Sure. Okay. Lake C, which is located <laughs> outside of the, <laughs> the city with B that there. same name. <laughs> um, Dylan, age nine, and Shasta, age eight, were Brenda's uh, other two children, and they were missing. So an Amber Alert issued for the children, and autopsies determined the death to be of the other three uh, blunt trauma to the head, and the victims were also bound. Seven weeks later, on July 2nd, 2005, at a Denny's, a restaurant waitress manager and two customers recognized Shasta sitting with an unknown man. They called the police and would not let the man leave. <coughs> Excuse me. Police arrived and arrested him. It was Duncan. Shasta identified herself to a waitress at the restaurant and told author- and to authorities. She was then taken to the Kootenai Medical Center for medical treatment and to be reunited with her father. The police detained Duncan on kidnapping charges and his outstanding federal warrants. Upon Chester being found at Denny's, authorities were not sure if the little boy was alive since he was not with them at the restaurant. So police asked for public tips, specifically with respect to sightings of a stolen red Jeep Cherokee with Missouri license plates that Duncan was driving at the time of his arrest. Authorities discovered that Duncan had rented the car in Minnesota and never returned it. Authorities also discovered... um, that when they talked to a gas station employee in Kellogg, about 40 miles east of the city that starts with the sea, recognized the vehicle as one that had stopped in her station hours before Duncan was arrested. The employee suspected the girl wandering around the, uh, wandering around the station might have been Shasta, but did not confront her as nothing appeared out of the ordinary. Um, the employee and her manager notified authorities after reviewing surveillance camera footage and identifying Duncan and Shasta in the video. So the son was never found. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Um, on July 4, 2005, investigators found remains at a remote or human remains at a remote makeshift campsite in the Lolo National Forest near St. Regis, Montana. The remains were sent to the FBI lab in Quantico, Virginia, for DNA testing and were positively, positively identified as those of Dylan, the little boy, her oh, little brother. Okay. During the trial, it emerged that Duncan shot Dylan at a point-blank range by holding off a sawed-off shotgun to his head. Pile of shit. That lo- he was... So you kill a kid like that, you are... 
executed publicly and humiliated. I agree. Um, yeah, because that little boy was how old was he again? Um, nine, and the little girl was eight. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, you should be. You should be still. I don't there's even. There's literally no regard for. There's not. There's nothing coming back from that. You're garbage at that point. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's <clears throat> like, <clears throat> you should practice forgiveness and all this stuff, but. There's no forgiveness for somebody like that. I don't, yeah, I don't think so either. So Shasta told the story of how her family was killed to the authorities. According to her, um, her police interview, Duncan killed her mother, her older brother, and her mother, mother's fiance, which they said he was a boyfriend, but fiance, and then kidnapped her and her brother driving away with them in that red Jeep Cherokee. She asked told investigators that her mother called her into the living room where she saw Duncan wearing black gloves and holding a gun. Um, he, he tied his, the mother's hands with the nylon zip ties and did the same thing to the, uh, the fiance and then her brother Slade. So Shasta and Dylan were, were removed from the house and placed inside the stolen rental car. Uh, while she waited with her brother, she heard the mother's fiance scream and then saw her injured older brother staggering away from the entrance of the home. Duncan then bludgeoned the three to death. Um, neither Shasta nor Dylan witnessed those murders. Both Shasta and Dylan were taken to other locations where they were repeatedly molested and tortured for six weeks. Uh, she said that they drove a long distance and stayed in two different campsites where Duncan told her of having beaten her family members to death with a hammer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, she also told investigators how Dylan was murdered. Duncan insisted Dylan's death was an accident. Initially, Sasta was standing on the other side of Duncan's Jeep when she heard a loud boom. She then ran to the other side and she saw Dylan lying on the ground screaming. Duncan was apparently digging through the car or digging through a clear plastic box looking for a beer when the shotgun that he also kept in the box went off, hitting Dylan in the stomach. She said that uh, she then saw Duncan put the shotgun to Dylan's head and pulled the trigger, but it failed to go off. While Dylan begged Duncan not to kill him, Duncan reloaded the shotgun and then put it to the back of the boy's head and pulled the trigger. Dylan was killed instantly. Poor, poor little angel. Um, according to Shasta, immediately after killing Dylan, Duncan started crying and told her that he only killed him to put it out of his misery. A public memorial service was held for Dylan on July 16, 2005, which would have been his 10th birthday. So, <clears throat> Duncan started crying because he killed him? Yeah, he he started crying that... Let's see. Um, yeah, he started crying and told her that he only killed him to put him out of his misery. <clears throat> so, but he was looking for beer, so he may have been drunk. And that's why his emotions care. got the better of him. I don't, I don't, don't know. Care. Um, she has to also, let's see, she also reported that Duncan nearly killed her days after killing Dylan. She said that he gave her the choice to be killed either by strangulation or with a gun. Shasta chose the former and Duncan proceeded to wrap a rope around her neck and pull it tight. However, Shasta begged Duncan to stop using the nickname Jet and he immediately did. He then asked her if she would like to meet his mother. To which she responded, yes. And the two drove back to um, Corodelian and stopped at the Denny's restaurant where Shasta was rescued. Well, good on the bystanders for picking that one up. Yes, absolutely. I, I don't know. That's always like, if I ever see that, I will definitely say something and run my loud mouth. Because, you know, like at know. the gas station, you know, unfortunately that lady was like, hey, nothing's wrong. That's not how you said that. Um, so Duncan's arrest led to the FBI to launch a, na a nationwide review of the unsolved missing child cases. He was inflicted as, as a possible sus sus suspect in several crimes that occurred between 94 and 97 when he was on parole between 2000 and 2005 and when he was free from prison. Although he was cleared as a suspect in some cases, authorities in California and Washington have enough evidence to believe that Duncan had committed uh, unsolved murders in their jurisdictions. You're right, it's Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene, okay. Um, April 4th, 1997, a 10-year-old Anthony Michael Martinez was playing with his friends in front of the, in, in the, his front yard of his home in Belmont, California, when an unknown man approached the group asking to him to find, help find his missing cat. 
When the boys refused, the man grabbed Martinez at knife point and threw him into his vehicle. After two weeks of search, Martinez's body was found nude and partially decomposed in Indio, California on April 19, 1997. Investigators noted that he had been sexually assaulted and bound with duct tape. Although the composite sketch of the suspect was made available and a partial fingerprint was taken from the duct tape found on Martinez's body, the case went eventually cold. In, June, in July 2005, bloggers noticed similarities between Duncan and the composite sketch, uh, the Martinez case, as well as between Duncan's vehicle and the one Martinez's assailant was driving. The FBI National Center for Missing and Exploited Children became involved and in turn contacted Riverside authorities. Riverside authorities were able to match the fingerprint taken from Martinez's body to Duncan. And on August 3rd, the Riverside County Sheriff's officially denou- announced Duncan's connection to the Martinez case. I like how like the public got involved, like the, the sluice of the Internet, because that's happened more than a few times to solve like cold cases. Like, just random people that do it as a hobby. They yeah. find um, connections Pat and Oswald's stuff. Pat wife did that. Yes, yes, she did. And um, she solved a couple of cold cases. Michelle. Gates. Uh, yeah. Gatesburg. I for always yeah. forget her last name. You know, he got remarried, by the way. Yeah, he got remarried. Um, <clears> and he's, like, super happy. Like, obviously, you know, he said he misses his wife. But he's, you know, doing the, doing, doing what he can. I love Pat Oswald. Um, federal prosecutors also revealed that Duncan confessed to the murders of Samuel White, and um, who was 11, and his sister Carmen Cubias, age nine, who vanished on July 6, 1996, after leaving the Crest Motel in the, in the Seattle Panhandle. Their remains were found on February 10, 1998, in Bothell, Washington. Hey. Um, that name you're saying, Samio? Yeah. That's Sammy Joe. It's just one word, but oh, it's Sammy Joe. Okay, sorry, Sammy Joe. <clears throat> so he confessed to a bunch of killings. Yeah, and he's he does more here. Um, Duncan has been convicted of uh, three by three courts in in an Idaho district court for the kidnapping and murders of Brendan Sladen, Mark McKenzie, the United States District Court for the District of Idaho for kidnapping of Shasta and Dylan and the murder of Dylan and other crimes, and a California uh, Superior Court for the kidnapping and murder of Anthony Martinez. Duncan first appeared in the Kootenai County Court on July 13, 2005, where he was charged with three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of first-degree kidnapping, all in conjunction with the deaths of Brenda and Slade and Mark. Uh, Kootenai County prosecutors had initially planned to charge Duncan with the kidnappings of Shasta and Dylan. However, they were deferred those charges to the federal courts as transporting children across state lines for the purpose of sexual exploitation is a federal offense. So it's like they upped the ante on that one. Trial was set to begin July 17, 2006, but it was delayed until April 4th after the district judge granted a request to defense more time to prepare for the trial, probably because there was so much involved. Yeah. And then again on August 20, October 26, excuse me, after the judge in the case stated that no one wants to try this case twice, including me. Duncan's attorneys blamed the multiple postponements on the prosecution instance on pursuing the death penalty. You think about that for a second, though, because there's going to be some some stuff trying this case. It's going to be so god awful, so horrible yeah. that he's right. You He wouldn't want to go through that again. Uh-uh. So I've, I was him. I'd be like. Yeah, granted, do what you got to do. Let's fucking knock this out the first time. Yeah, I agree. Um, because this, you know, you see this just gets dragged out so much anyways. And something like this where it's like kids molestation. and ugh. Um, On October 16, 2006, shortly after the jury selection began, the Kootenai County prosecutors and Duncan's attorney researched a plea bargain in which Duncan pleaded guilty to all the state charges against him. He was immediately sentenced to three consecutive life sentences without possibility of parole for the kidnapping charges. Sentencing on the three murder charges was continued pending the outcome of his federal trial on kidnapping and murder charges. The judges said that if he did not receive the death penalty on federal charges, he would return to Kootenai County for a death penalty phase on the state murder charges. Over two years later, after being sentenced to death on federal charges, the Kootenai County sentenced Duncan to three additional life sentences. Duncan also agreed to cooperate with the county sheriff's department detectives investigating his crimes and provided password to the encrypted file stored on the computer. Uh, 
on January 18, 2007, Duncan was in, indicted uh, by a uh, federal, go- federal grand jury and 10 counts of kidnapping, kidnapping resulting in death, aggravated sexual abuse of a minor, and sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death, and other crimes related to illegal firearm possession and vehicle theft. He was arraigned the following day by a federal court in Boise, Idaho, where the judge ordered Duncan to stand trial the following March. Duncan's defense attorneys immediately requested a postponement in which was granted the week of the trial originally scheduled to begin. The new trial date was set for January 22nd, 2008. So in these kinds of cases where they have to post, where they want to postpone it, <clears throat> yeah. why aren't those things overturned? We know the we know we've got the accounts, we got the evidence, we got the confessions. Why don't they just go? No, he's. I don't know. We need to hurry this along. It's due process. Uh, oh. you're, if he waived his right to a speedy trial, that doesn't just negate his right to a speedy trial, but also the prosecution. So, um, <clears throat> it's if there if there's a, a motion to stay for or a motion for discovery, or a motion for anything, mm-hmm. it has to be at least considered for his defense. Otherwise, it's not due process of the law, and there's going to be a mistrial where he would likely walk. So they're going to be more lenient towards giving into requests for the defense just because if they do deny something, and they find out that it violates his due process, they just let a murderer go free. Okay, that makes sense. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. His defense attorneys immediately requested a postponement, which was granted the week the trial was originally scheduled to begin. A new trial date was set for January 22nd, 2008. On December 3rd, 2007, Duncan pled guilty to all 10 charges against him. As a condition of the agreement, Shasta would not have to testify in the penalty phase of the trial due to the gag order. Other details of the plea agreement would not be released. And that just means you you don't have to testify against yourself in <clears throat> any means. Like, um, it, you don't have to incriminate yourself by your, with your own testimony. Yeah. Jury selection for the penalty case or penalty phase for Duncan's fe- Duncan's federal trial began April 14, 2008. During the jury selection, Duncan dismissed his attorneys and chose to represent himself. His attorneys objected, asserting that he was not competent enough to do so and requested a formal hearing to um, the issue. The district court ordered the evaluation of Duncan to determine his competence and accepted the evaluator's conclusion that he was competent to proceed without counsel. Well, they say any man who represents himself has a fool for a client. Yeah. Um, August 27, 2008, after three hours of deliberation, the jury recommended the death penalty. That's fast. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like, <laughs> three whoa, hour three hours? Three hours? fucking fast. Oh, they're like, there's, you know, that they're like, there's kids involved. Fuck this guy. Um, and the judge imposed three de- death sentences for kidnapping resulting in death, sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death, and the use of a firearm in a violent crime resulting in death. All related in the death of Dylan, and um, on November 3rd, 2008, Duncan was sentenced to an additional three consecutive life terms without parole in a federal prison for kidnapping of Shasta and then for sexually abusing her and her brother. Duncan's standby counsel filed a notice of appeal. Duncan subsequently wrote the court and informed it that any appeal was taken against his wishes. In July 2011, the ninth court of appeal reversed the district court's decision to permit Duncan to represent himself without first holding a hearing as to his competence to do so and remand the, uh, for a hearing to um, hearing as to the issue. As of September 2012, Duncan is incarcerated at the U.S. Penitentiary Terre Haute, Terre Haute. Terre Haute. Terre Haute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, in Indiana? Yeah. Okay. Um, on December 6, 2013, a federal judge ruled that Duncan was mentally competent when he gave up his right to the appeal for his death sentence, which I thought they figured that out earlier because they did that before his sentencing, so I'm not sure why they had to do it again. Psychiatrists working with the prosecution diagnosed Duck- Duncan with pedophilia, sadistic personality disorder, and antipersonality disorder with narcissistic traits, but maintained that he was legally sane. So I'm wondering a, a, a point of contention here. 
if he is un, with if he has narcissistic <clears throat> tendencies, then the story of him crying mm-hmm. doesn't make no, a whole sure lot. doesn't. Well, I mean, maybe also he would have to be a sociopath, though, not a narcissist. There's there's differences there, but yeah. it doesn't make much sense to me why he would cry then. I but, don't know. Like I said, he was looking for beer, so maybe he was drinking. That and, could have been that, yeah. And then his uh, in vino veritas. So he basically just said, at this point, I'm just going to represent myself. Yeah. Don't appeal the death I'm penalty. I'm doing a good job. I'm I got my little briefcase. To... And then, <clears throat> who was it that decided they were going to take him out of state to uh, Indiana, Terre Haute, to get evaluated? The... um. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, the Ninth Court of Appeals. Okay. Okay. That's wonder, like the last rung of the ladder, right? If you're in that area, there must be a really, really, I guess, I don't know what to what word to use, but <clears throat> Terre Haute's not big. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've never heard of anything out of there other than just regular businesses. Um. I wonder if they've got some like world renowned psychiatrist there or something. They might. I'm not sure. Maybe or it's because if it's just the closest place that they had somebody qualified. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. That was maybe licensed by a federal court. I don't know how that stuff works. Mm-mm. I don't know. I'd either. like to. Yeah. That'd be fun to learn. Um, a three general judge panel of the Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals ruled on March 27, 2015, that a district judge correctly determined Duncan was mentally competent when he arrived or when he waived his rights to an appeal the death sentence. The U.S. Supreme Court on February 28, 2016, denied Duncan's petition to hear his appeal of a federal judge ruling December 2013, which affirmed by a three judge panel of the Ninth. Uh, U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in March 2015. On February 28, 2017, a petition for writ of habeas corpus was filed. On September 27, 2017, it was ordered that the government's third motion for the extension of time was granted in part and denied in part. The government's response was due to October 13, October 30, 2016, that the petitioner's reply was due on or before January 30th, 2018. This guy should be dead already. I'm sorry. Um, on January 18th, if we go back to the California sentencing now, or the the California side of it, January 18th, 2007, the same day Duncan was in, indicted for in federal court, Riverside County officials announced that Duncan was charged with Martinez's murder. Despite attempts by the Riverside County officials to extradite Duncan to California, including an appeal by Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, Duncan's federal trial proceeded. He was eventually extradited to California on January 24, 2009, five months after being sentenced to death by the federal court. On March 15, 2011, Duncan pled guilty to uh, Martinez's murder and then was sentenced to two life terms on April 5, 2011. As a part of a plea deal, the sentence comes without possibility of parole or right to appeal. Although Duncan could have faced separate death sentence in addition to the ones he already had been sentenced in federal court, Riverside County District Attorney Paul Zellerbach justified that life with life sentence by saying that he had consulted with the Martinez family who wanted closure to the case um, and that the federal system will kill him long before the state of California would seriously consider it. <clears throat> and this is called fifth nail of revelations um prior to the arrest for murder duncan maintained his personal website the fifth nail according to the lore in addition to the fourth nails used by to pierce the body of jesus christ in the his crucifixion there was a fifth nail that was taken away and hidden by the romans duncan adopted the name for his website and blog the website depicted duncan's day-to-day life as a sex offender in the blog he denied being a pedophile and claimed that he had been sexually abused as a child. That doesn't take away your, you're a pedophile because you have the thoughts of it and you act upon those thoughts. Yeah. You're not, a, you're, you're, you can't say, well, I'm not a pedophile because I was sexually it abused. It doesn't matter what gave you those thoughts or if yeah. that gave you or what you think gave you those thoughts. You had those thoughts. And I'm not saying that all pedophiles are pieces of shit. Yeah, they are. I, I don't think so. I think that if you act on it, then you are. But if you have those thoughts, you can't control that. But, Saying I was sexually abused and now I'm a pedophile or 
that makes me not a pedophile. That's bullshit. You you've yeah, you've I acted agree. upon that, so you are a pedophile by uh, by and large. Yeah. But as a person, as a person who knows quite a bit about that, then you shouldn't be. You shouldn't. First off, it's just an excuse. This this is a fucking martyr piece. That's all yeah, it is. He's yeah. he's just being. He's saying, "Oh yeah. well, mar- I'm I'm a martyr because," and and then he equates it to you know, you know, fictional Jesus. But essentially, he's just saying like, "Oh, I'm a martyr." So mm-hmm. be be sad for me. It's like no, you yeah. you acted upon those problems. That's your fucking problem now. And it's like you know, de- the death penalty should should have been carried out. Like you said, a long fucking yeah, time ago at this fucking just point. Too I, long. I mean, these how many cases do we read over and over and over again where it's it's ten to fifteen years? I mean, how much due process do you really fucking need at that point? I guess is my question. Yeah, especially if the evidence like this. So he currently maintains a blog spot website titled Joseph E. Duncan Third Returns to the Web from Federal Death Row to Expose the Meaning of the Fifth Nail. Um, in the introduction, his most recent contributions under the fifth nail exposed confessions, all the content site is posted by someone called Silenced, who presumably receives letters from Duncan to post on the site on his behalf. Um, John Adams of the Kootenai County Public Defender and Prosecutor Bill Douglas declined comment on the possibility that Duncan is blogging from prison. Inmates don't have access to the Internet. And while the outgoing letters are scanned for requests for contraband or for help in planning the escape, they aren't read word for word. Uh, jurors who imposed the death penalty of Joseph Duncan were offered counseling in order to, for them to cope with the horrific evidence they had to see during the trial. I couldn't imagine what the pictures looked like. Um, this evidence included human rena- remains, a wire noose, as well as videos of Duncan torturing nine-year-old Dylan. God. Yeah. Uh, during one of those videos, a child could be heard screaming in pain while naked. Duncan can be heard shouting, the devil is here, boy, the devil himself. The devil likes to watch children suffer and cry. Um, almost done here. So Shasta's home. On April 3rd, 2007, the community effort to build a house for Shasta reached a milestone with more than 50 people attending the groundbreaking ceremony at the site of Shasta's future home. Mitch Schmock, owner and foundation uh, board member with the Windermere Cordialine Realty, told attendees that the project was on phase two and that they would still had to pay for the lot. Supporters raised about $50,000 and needed to raise another 85000 to cover the cost of the lot, <clears throat> property taxes, and building permits. The house would be held in a trust for Shasta until she turned 25. Fundraising efforts began for Shasta's father, Steve, who apparently told Smock that he and Shasta were homeless. This is a statement that Steve later said he resented because um, he and Shasta actually had been renting at the time. Fundraising efforts such as a car wash as well as dinner and auction were called for uh, called the Shasta Fiesta was held. And then things go downhill a little bit for her here again. Uh, Shasta grew to have troubled history with law enforcement. In 2014, Shasta was arrested and sent to juvenile detention for 12 months following drug related crime. She said that she was uh, that the sentence saved her life. But in October 2017, she was accused of leaving methamphetamine uh, where her one-year-old could have access to it. December 2017, she was charged with two misdemeanor charges and pled guilty in April 8, 2018, and was handed a 18-month unsupervised probation with, um, with withheld judgment. Upon the successful completion of her probation, Shasta could petition to get the charges wiped from her record. A month into her probation, however, she violated it and admitted, <clears throat> admitted the violation of June uh, 21 her probation sentence remained 18 months but was changed to supervised probation and in 2016 shasta was then 19 years old started a petition called the slade and dylan's law for her brother that was murdered by duncan the petition described that she stated the convicted sex offenders should not be let out of jail this would effectively mean that the three strike rule for a violent sex offender would be reduced to one strike. By the time the petition closed, it had 51,821 supporters. And to wrap it up here, eviction on September 30, 2018, Shasta's father, Steve, posted a national one strike law slate for, um, uh, for Slade and Dylan, the Facebook page. In the post, he say that he and Shasta were being evicted from the house they were, that was built for him and Shasta. According to him, Shasta tried to con- convincing the trustees, the Shasta grown charitable trustee or charitable trust to call off the eviction, but was unsuccessful in doing so. 
She's now 21, living in the Boise area with her father and was served the eviction notice. The managers of the trust uh, stated that their obligation is to Shasta, not the father. Mm. Ownership of the house is to revert to Shasta on her 25th birthday when the trust expires, unless the trust sells the property before then. One of the trustees, Midge Mox, stated that the trust needs to sell the house in order to continue supporting Shasta while she lives in the in the Nampa near Boise. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so she's just, that just, I'm assuming that just fucked her up pretty good. Yeah, I'd be pretty pissed about that. <laughs> yeah. So that is that douchebag that's still alive um, 10 years later. Yeah, and I want to go ahead and say this. I, I, I think what, what I'm saying is, is, like, although pedophilia is disgusting, mm-hmm. first and foremost, <clears throat> there's a huge debate that goes on about when it comes to uncontrollable thoughts and then the things you act on them. Like I think of murdering people all the time, especially when I'm driving, but uh, you know, there's a difference between me thinking about it and me murdering them. Um, I do not understand pedophilia. It's, I don't yeah, I get it, either. <clears throat> but I understand that there's rules of attraction to everybody. I just think that when it comes to problems that we have, I mean, especially with this dude, like, yeah, he's a piece of shit because he acted upon that stuff. Mm -hmm. But how long ago could he have been helped with the right fucking tools from health professionals? And maybe maybe he couldn't, you know, but and maybe and yeah, maybe he's maybe he couldn't have. But I don't know. There's. I think that after confessions and evidence have been, you know, supported, plus the fact that he was clearly not really feeling much at the same time that he had a was acting on that shit mm-hmm. i just think that he should have been put to death a long time ago yeah, like what's what's the point you're he's eating what those you, tax dollars up. i mean at that <clears> point <throat> yeah you're just but i'm not a professional i'm just fucking we all are I professionals on tv i just play one because i'm professionals in the ho- on this podcast in. it's ridiculous but we're procasters <clears throat> i'm all a right. procrastinator well that that story kind of bummed me out <laughs> sorry yeah. uh vance i think i yeah, felt dude. writing it <laughs> Like, oh. Yeah. Uh, how can people get a hold of us? Well, man, the best way to get a hold of us is on our website. Click on the contact us link. It'll take you to our email, which is don't look under the bed podcast at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on Twitter at DLUTV, our Facebook at don't look under the bed. And um, did I say our website's don't look under the bed.net. Yep. Okay. Don't um, look under the bed. That's about it. Um, it's actually pronounced Jamal. Not Gmail, but Jim- thanks though. I'm sorry, um, I'll do better. We want to thank each and every listener out every there. Freaking one, <laughs> every freaking one of you. Um, yo, 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 you did a little you're bit. Dead. You did, you did, oh, you a little bit. You did. Um, go get your fucking shine box. All right. Um, big shout out to the uh, the favorite listeners. We got Shayla. We got uh, uh, uh Travis. Still, still hanging out, listening to us every, every, every episode, and always a friend of the podcast. Of podcast. Big Dobbs beer and balm and products. I just used that the other day. Yeah, I used it today. I use it I every use day. It like nine hundred you know, times. A do you know day. where I put it? I put it in my beard. <laughs> Did you know? Well, and, and I wonder I, if he knows that my that's, butt hairs. Oh, no. uh, if you're in the <laughs> Omaha metro probably. area, they're selling Big Dobbs at Hy-Vee now. Otherwise, mm-hmm. no look, shit. Yeah, look him up yeah, on the Facebook. He's been at Hy-Vee for a bit. I asked him about it. I was like. I saw your, your thing. But you can also go to BigDobs.com. That's BigDobbs.com. All right. Well, that's the Don't Look Under the Bed podcast. It sure is. It and, sure uh, is. It's, kind of, it's a podcast for all things quantity. All, all, all right. right. Oh, my God. Um, go this was you, not a very comedic episode. No. It, well, when, you, when you got fucking kids involved, man, you can't, yeah. you can't make fun of that shit. Not like you can make fun of murder, murder anyway, but it's just like lighten the mood. I thought we were the comedy podcast, but. We're the bummer Sorry. podcast now. We'll do something funner next week. We'll do go back to more fun. We'll do a much more funner, funner murder. Oh, much fun. It's gonna be so much gooder. <laughs> more betters. <laughs> more better butters. The more better butter dispenser. All right, guys. Uh, thanks again for listening. And uh... Bye. Bye.